Hey everybody and welcome to Facebook Live. I'm Grant and this is Jeanette Hi. and we are live in the Rachel Ray Shore Prep Kitchen and today is Throwback Thursday. Happy Throwback Thursday yeah. everybody. So we're going to celebrate some of our favorite recipes from the Rachel Ray Show past um, but like always make sure you comment let us know what you guys are thinking um, and we want to hear from you guys tell us what your favorite throwback recipe is if you have any nostalgic fun memories of food um, let us know what those are below because we love hearing from you guys. Um, and I think we're going to get started with one of our favorite dishes, right, Jeanette? Yeah, we are. We're going to get started today with, um, today we're actually doing two of Rachel's throwback dishes. Yes, and, correct. you know, I've worked here for almost 10 years. You've worked here for almost like six or seven yeah. now. So we have definitely have a repertoire of the Rachel Ray recipes that we love the most. Um, and so these are two recipes that, like, just really bring it back for me. Like, um, so we're going to start today with um, Rachel's pretzel crusted chicken. Yeah. And um, it's definitely one of my favorite recipes. Yeah. Um, I make this one a lot. I make it on New Year's Eve. I don't know why that's become a tradition for me, but I make it on New Funny. Year's Eve. Um, have you guys ever made Rachel's pretzel crusted chicken? She's been making it since season one. Um, so this one's actually a little bit of an updated uh, version of it. She made this, I think, either this season or last season. This is her um, honey, uh, her honey peanut pretzel crusted chicken and who does not love a yeah. roasted peanut yeah so um, it starts in the food processor you're gonna make your own breadcrumbs out of pretzels and pretzels are one of my favorite snacks I always Grant always catches me with my hand yeah. in a bag of pretzels at my desk we've been eating pretzels all morning all morning this. So this, this is now <laughs> half a bag of pretzels because we've been eating them um, but have you guys ever breaded um, chicken in anything that wasn't breadcrumbs I think Rachel got this idea I mean it must have been like 12 or 13 years ago to do this with pretzels <laughs> it's loud and I, I just love I love the idea of breading chicken and other things so yeah. Um, like I said, we're just going to pulse these <laughs> until they're breadcrumbs. And that's good. I kind of like it a little chunky still. Um, so we're half of them are powdery and half of them you can still kind of tell that they're pretzels. Yeah, and it gives it a nice crunch that way too, I, Yeah, right? I agree. Totally. Um, before I add the honey roasted peanuts in, we want to say hi to Amber from Philadelphia. Hello, hi, Amber. Amber. Happy Thursday. Happy TBT. TBT. Thanks for watching. Um, so I'm going to add these in. Awesome. Um, and you've watched us uh, bread a bunch of things on this uh, live stream in the past few weeks. Yeah. Um, so this is, we're going ahead with the standard breading process as we always call it in the kitchen. So you can see like the nice texture of that. It's, um, they're breadcrumbs, but they still have some, some oomph to them, yeah. right? Some crunchy pieces. A little crunchy. A little crunchies. Exactly. Yeah, I think we like to bread stuff um, and shallow bread because that's, you know, a really great way to make a quick dinner. Mm -hmm. um, and it's super easy too. You it can definitely really do this ahead of time. Um, like if you want to have this tonight and you have a little time right after this um, webcast, you can just make this chicken, put it in the fridge, and then fry it up when you're ready to eat. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Make, make ahead. You know yeah. how much we, we love make, make ahead. ahead tip. Um, I want to say hello to Michelle from Ohio commented below. Hello, Hi, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Thanks for watching. Um, so this is just uh, three to four sprigs of fresh thyme, which I was chopping as we started. So I'm just going to mix that right up in here. I love that she add, that Rachel added that. It's just yeah. like a nice little fresh burst. Yeah, totally. It's a nice to add something fresh to you know anything. Absolutely. Gives it a nice yummy um, flavor. It so we're really using, nice. it does smell really nice, doesn't yeah. it? They should make thyme candles. Do they make thyme candles? That's like one of my know, favorite they smells. They should. Maybe, maybe. I also love the smell of fried chicken that we're about to make, so maybe they should make fried chicken <laughs> candles as well. Maybe they should do that too. <laughs> um, so we're going to start out, we're using chicken tenders today, but you can very easily also, um, if you've got chicken breasts in the fridge or if you're going to the store and buy it, you can't find chicken tenders, you can very easily just um, take a chicken breast and cut it long ways about oh, that's a great three idea. or four times. Yeah. You just want that chicken finger shape yeah. essentially. So I season them with a little salt and pepper because when you, you're um, breading, you always want to season every single um, layer, yeah. right? Or, you know, if your kids love chicken nuggets, um, just cut these into the shape of nuggets and they'll never know that they're not actually nuggets. You're very right. Because right. yeah. kids can be really particular about shapes. They can be very particular I I about shapes. shapes. Yeah, you're right. Um, since today is Throwback Thursday, we're doing some of our favorite um, of Rachel's throwback recipes. But Jeanette, what's your, do you have any like favorite like throwback Thursday food memories? I do actually. Yeah, I was just on the phone with my mom this morning kind of asking her the history of it. Growing up, we, uh, my mom always made this dish and we called it in my house. I apologize if this isn't the right name, but we called it Tony Danza pasta. <laughs> and it was angel hair pasta and he used fresh arugula and plum tomatoes and um, some clams and 
Ooh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You could call it Who's the Boss Pasta. Who's the Boss Pasta. Who's I the love boss that. Boss Pasta. Um, so, yeah, I don't, my mom, you know, we always used to watch daytime TV when I was a kid. Yeah. And um, Tony Danza was always on TV making this pasta. That's so And funny. my mom was always in the kitchen making this pasta as well. So, um, Tony Danza, if you're watching, we love your pasta. Um, all right, so while we're talking about Tony Danza pasta, <laughs> um, I just breaded this up um, in the bread, uh, the breadcrumb, the pretzel and peanut mixture. Yeah. A little bit of egg back through the peanut pretzel mixture, and I'm just gonna throw Ooh, this so into it's like it's double crusted. Double crusted, Super exactly. Crunchy. I'm just gonna pop this carefully in the oil, which we're gonna just turn up a bit. Yeah. Um, and and um, so this is just today we're using just a little bit of olive oil. Um, you can use coconut oil. You can use vegetable oil. Just shallow. Um, you know, you, it's just you're just kind of sautéing it uh, or shallow fry on both shallow sides. Fry, yeah. yeah, and um, we've been using the cast iron skillet this week. I just I like I like a shallow fry and a yeah. cast iron skillet. Um, but you could totally bake these if you wanted to, right? Oh, absolutely! Yeah. Yesterday we were doing healthy meals, yeah. and we were talking about the uh, my love of the olive oil in the spray can. Yeah. And actually, yeah, if you put these up on a baking sheet with a rack, you could easily spray them on it's both sides idea, yeah. really liberally and throw them in the oven. That is a great yeah. a great idea. Um, I'm gonna bread up a few more of these. All right, cool. Um, and oh, well, Kyle just commented, and he said that he loves Rachel's bacon sliders. Oh, yum. Yeah, those are. I mean, Rachel has so many burger she recipes. Is the Queen of burgers. She is the self-proclaimed yeah. queen of burgers. Yeah. She is, yeah. And that she has so many burger recipes. Um, while we're talking about burgers, I'm gonna yeah. make something that's similar to a burger, kind of, right? A sloppy job. Oh yeah. It's almost like a deconstructed so, burger. Totally, so nostalgic. Um, so this is, you know, one of Rachel's recipes as well, and she has a couple sloppy joe recipes. But this one's my favorite because it's a pizza joe. That's right, mm. it's a sloppy joe that tastes like pizza. Um, so in this pan, I just browned up some ground beef. It's nice and brown. Season it with some salt and pepper. And to that, I'm going to add some chopped up um, pepperoni. Now, um, one of Rachel's really great tips for this um, particular recipe is that she buys a big um, stick of sausage and just grates it on a cheese grater so you get like a nice coarse grind, just like you can see right there. Um, <clears throat> so that's, you just add that right down into the ground beef and saute that up that. a little bit. And since that's already cooked, you just want to kind of get it nice and warm and a little bit crispy, but it doesn't take too long. No, not at all. Um, Grace commented, Grant, and she wants to let you know that she loves your recipes and desserts. Oh my gosh, that's so nice. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, Grace. I love you. Thanks for watching. Kisses. Um, so in here I have, like I said, our ground beef and our ground up pepperoni. And to that, I'm going to add in two cloves of garlic. And I'm using Rachel's tip, and both Jeanette and I use this tip all the time too, is you always grate your garlic on a grater because it's so much faster and so much easier. <clears throat> and you can just do it right down into the pot. Just make sure you watch your fingers. You <laughs> Rachel finger. always says you don't want to be your secret ingredient. <laughs> That's true, yes. <laughs> She's not wrong either. Um, Jessica commented, and she wants to know, oh, I just splattered myself with some water. Um, no, it was oil. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica wants to know if you can do, uh, oh, the pretzel peanut trick with um, thin cut pork schnitzel style. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Totally. Definitely. Um, I, we, Rachel makes schnitzel pretty frequently. Yeah. Um, and we always, every time she does it, we're always like, why don't we do this more? Yeah. It's such a great idea. Um, you could definitely also do this with a chicken cutlet. You know how much we love a good chicken cutlet in mm -hmm. here. Um, a beef cutlet, that'd be really nice too. Any kind of cutlet. Cutlet. Really? Just a cutlet. Every time it's funny, every time Rachel, a um, little behind the scenes uh, news about what we do back here, anytime Rachel's doing a cutlet, I don't know why this memory sticks in my head. We, um, she just makes these like big gorgeous cutlets and there's always just like lemon around. Whenever that comes off set, we come back here and we take the cutlets and we cut them up and we kind of, it's yeah. like a big free for all. It's, yeah, it turns into a cutlet mayhem. A cu cutlet mayhem and in we here. we all just eat cutlet until it's gone. Not until we're full. No. Until and it's all gone. <laughs> <laughs> You're very right. Which is yes. a big difference. Exactly. Um, yeah, no, we, we love a cutlet in here. Yeah. So in this pan, I added a little bit of dried oregano as well. Um, and now I'm going to add in one can of tomato sauce. Mm. Um, because if you're just now joining us, right now I'm in the midst of making a pizza joe. It's like a sloppy joe, but it tastes like pizza. Oh. Um, but like I said, if you guys are joining us right now, today we are celebrating Throwback Thursday. Happy Throwback Thursday, um, everybody. I'm making a couple of throwback recipes from the Rachel Ray Show past and some of our favorites. Um, Jeanette's making a pretzel peanut crusted chicken. Yeah. Right? And I'm making a pizza sloppy. You are. Dough. You know. You asked me what my favorite throwback recipe was. What's your favorite throwback recipe? Oh, I don't know. I think one that comes to mind right off the bat is that my parents used to love making um, slow cooker chicken. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and I think it was only a couple ingredients. I'll have to ask my mom later if this is correct, but she would just put in some um, chicken breast into the slow cooker, a can of like cream of chicken soup, and then a few splashes of vermouth. Ooh! Slow cooked all day long, and it was like this soupy sort of like pulled chicken. That um, sounds delicious. And another recipe is my grandma Kiever's um, chicken and noodles. She mm. made like, it was like this Amish like um, egg noodle. Yeah. And then she would like braise chicken, put that all together, Ooh. and then serve it on top of mashed potatoes. Oh. Carb on carb on chicken with a lot of sauce. Can't go it's wrong one with of my that. Favorites. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That sounds that was really yummy. amazing. Do you guys have any favorite throwback recipes? Um, I was just thinking as you were talking about that, I was thinking about tuna noodle casserole. Oh, that yeah. is one of my yeah. absolute favorites. Anytime, like, I have an excuse. Rachel has a few great recipes for that as well. Yeah. But that just, for me, it really tastes like my childhood. It's um, so good. My parents all used to, also used to make beef stroganoff a lot. Oh, I love beef really stroganoff. Good. So, so good. Um, will you smell this real quick? Yeah. Doesn't oh. that smell like a pizza party? It smells like a sloppy pizza <laughs> like, party. <laughs> this smells so good. I'm so excited to eat this. That I'm too. Um, and this, you guys just saw this come together super quick. It yeah. just needs to cook a few minutes more, and then it's going to be ready to eat. So, that is so... Um, quick um karen just commented and she says that we need our own show well this is it karen you're watching you're it. watching it karen <laughs> <laughs> thank you for and the we'll compliment be back here on monday right we will be yeah. yeah um so make sure you check out the facebook page we're gonna be here all next week as all next well. week um so come back and all the week after that and so karen you that. might be sick of us by the end of july um, but thank you for watching <laughs> but on monday we're going to be making a 15 minute meal and no cooked pasta sauce we are um and a salad maybe a dessert i don't a know sal we're still, yeah, working, we're still on working on it oh actually somebody um who was watching and I wrote your name down on a post-it, so I'll shout you out on Monday. Um, wanted to know how I made my sangria. So I'm going to oh, be making yeah. my three-ingredient sangria on Monday. So definitely come back exciting. and don't miss that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so actually, I'm going to take these chicken tenders out. Can you guys see how beautiful and brown and crispy that is? That is so good. Um, I am going to um, remove some of these. And what do you think? Do you think it's time to show them like a throwback dessert? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I when we um, were talking earlier this week, and you know, who doesn't love celebrating Throwback Thursday? I love seeing like yeah. baby pictures of people on social media and everything. Um, but we um, we were thinking about desserts or like things from our childhood that were just really nostalgic. And something for uh, me was a malted milkshake. And who doesn't love a milkshake? We've been making milkshake jokes in this kitchen all day long. But we, I love a, a malted milkshake. There's something about malted milk powder that just, I don't know, tastes like that candy that I love. And it's yeah. just so, so nostalgic. Thank you, Grant. Yeah. Um, so we, let me just turn this oil down. I'm going to pop these in the oven um, and keep these warm because they are, you know, they're probably cooked through. They cooked in the oil long enough. Yeah. But it's a great tip to put um, your, anything that you're shallow frying on a uh, baking, what is this called? Uh, right a now. cooling rack. A cooling rack, thank yes. you. And <laughs> on a sheet tray, and you're gonna pop that in a low oven to keep them warm. Again, I, I, I always say I make this for entertaining, um, particularly on New Year's Eve, and I don't know why. Mm -hmm. But um, that's a great way to make them ahead and oh, then yeah. um, keep them warm keep for them warm. If, you know when people are coming. Um, Shannon commented and said that her favorite throwback recipe is navy beans and ham. Oh, that sounds so that good. That does sound really good. I, love I don't think I've ever heard of that ham. before, Shannon. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, I think it's like a ham steak and then you make beans on the side as ham well. Steak. Or maybe it's all together. Actually, Canada let us know. Because <laughs> I've had it before where it's just like a ham steak and then you serve beans on the side. Um, my grandma used to make that as well. I love ham steak. Um, but yeah, I'm sure there's different ways you can make nice. it. Nice. Um, Caroline said she loves creamed peas on toast. Oh, Caroline. Yum. That sounds so good right now. Um, in our very first Facebook um, Live, I made a... Um, Cream chicken and greens. Was that our first one? Maybe our second one. Yeah. I don't know. The recipe's up there. It's, yeah, it's up um, online. But it was cream chicken with peas and asparagus and stuff with a nice serving on toast. So if you like cream peas and ham, you'll probably love we that recipe. Love, love um, that We one. can post that for you later. So you Definitely. Can check it out. Susan just commented and she says that she loves blackberry cobbler that her mom used to make. Oh, that's fun. That's I so love nice. A blackberry <sighs> cobbler, and that's such a great recipe for right now. Right now, exactly. Are so delicious. Blackberries are so. I was just in Oregon. Yeah. And I was just telling my friend this morning, the berries in Oregon were the most delicious berries I've ever had in my life. I don't yeah. know why. Like, they were from the farmer's market. They were cheap. And we were just driving around eating them like we were crazy yeah. people. They were so fresh and delicious. Um, I just got back from Montana, and I brought Ooh. back some huckleberries. You did, for yeah. Us. They were. Um, have you ever, I didn't know really huckleberries real. were real. That's. I know everybody says it, but that's a real berry, and it is. It exists one one place, I think. One place. Thank um, you for bringing that really back for me. We were just snacking on them before this. You're welcome. 
Um, okay, so this is my strawberry malted milkshake. Um, and I'm gonna name drop, yesterday Grant dropped uh, a Gwyneth Paltrow. Today I'm gonna name drop a Bobby Flay. Ooh. Chef Bobby Flay is You're a big- my Paltrow with the Flay. <laughs> I like it. We, he's a great friend of the show and a great friend of ours in the kitchen. Um, and he was here, uh, when was it? When he was um, talking about his, uh, his burger restaurant, which is one of my favorites. And he was here making a bunch of milkshakes and he gave us this tip that um, he said that uh, you don't use as much milk in a milkshake as you would think because there's so much milk in the ice cream and cream yeah. that you really don't need as much of it as you think so we're going to try that out again today um so i just have a pint of strawberry ice cream i did three to four heaping tablespoons of malt because like i said i'm a little bit of a malt freak um i really love the flavor and i'm going to put in a few frozen strawberries just to kind of give it a little bit more of a strawberry flavor and i did only a quarter cup of milk so Ooh. we're going to see if this comes yeah, together we've got milk. we've got more milk somewhere so pop this on um, well, that's going. Jessica commented below and said that she loves poppy seed braided bread. Ooh. I've never heard of that. That you sounds good. Okay. I'd love to check it out. Um, I'm going to go grab your um, My glasses. The glasses. Yeah. Yeah. So really quickly, I had frozen some glasses and Grant's grabbing those out of the freezer for me. I thought it's a cute presentation for a milkshake and then it stays cooler. I don't know about where you guys live right now, but we're in New York City and we were all just talking in here. It is so hot out today. The humidity, it felt like I never got out of the shower this morning. I walked out of the shower, I got dressed, I walked out, it still felt like a shower. Is it hot where you guys are today? Because today was, so it is, it is a good day hot. for a nice frosty milkshake. Hey Grant, Bobby Flay wasn't wrong. Not that I ever thought he was wrong. <laughs> but look at oh, how it's really smooth and creamy. Awesome. I'm gonna pour this out. Look how thick and creamy that is. And he's right, yeah, you really, and I guess yeah, maybe all these all these years we've been making watery milkshakes. Yeah. Because we've been putting too much milk in. I love a super thick milkshake Me too. too. Because as it sits on the table, it's gonna start to melt anyway. So you exactly. wanna start out with it nice and thick, I think. Oh my gosh. Um, Lorraine commented and said that she loves toasted bread with warm cinnamon uh, sugar. Oh, that's milk. such a good one. Yeah, cinnamon, that's yummy. Cinnamon sugar bread. I feel like that's like a, when you were a kid and you're, you weren't feeling well. My mom always made me cinnamon toast. Yeah. Um, all right. Dear, we're we sharing. <laughs> we're sharing. This is so adorable. Mm. It's really thick. I can't get it out of the straw. <laughs> Maybe it's a little too cold. Oh, it's really good though. Yeah. You're using both straws. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't think I'm gonna share this. No. Okay, fine. I'll drink mine out of the blender when we're done. Yeah, this, this is yours. There's mine. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> um, Jessica commented from East Oregon. Oh. Hello, Jessica. Jessica, do you agree with me that the berries are just out of control in Oregon? Like, I don't. <laughs> I don't know what it was. You I could put those berries in this milkshake. You absolutely could. I don't know what it was about those no, berries. Oh, you can have some too. thank you. That's really good, though. Thanks. I um, love the malted milk. Did I put yeah. too much malt in? Because no, it's really good. I, I really... love the, the the fresh strawberry with the strawberry ice cream. Sort of reinforces the strawberry mm -hmm. flavor. Mm. Um, so it's super good. It's probably one of the best strawberry milkshakes I've ever had. Oh wow! I will thank say you. That. I'm it's honored. The truth. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, so how is your Joe doing? Good. I think we're ready to plate it up. We're ready actually. to plate it up? Yeah. Great. Um, I let it cool a you tiny bit. You need some buns? Bit. Yeah, I have some buns on the back counter over there. I'm going to bring one of those up. Um, and we're actually going to serve this with a little bit of fresh basil. Mm. Um, and this is another one of Rachel's great tips. Whenever you bring basil home from the store, put it into a jar of um, water and put a little plastic baggie on top, and it sort of makes like a little greenhouse. I so love that basil tip. basil stays nice and fresh. Um, definitely don't put it in the fridge because that makes it go bad very quickly. Basil does not like the fridge. Yeah. Um, Jessica said, can you make the same recipe with almond milk and sorbet? Uh, absolutely. I can't see why not. Jessica, yeah. let, let us know how that turns out. Yeah, try it and let us I, know. Um, I'm normally more of an almond milk girl myself, so let me know. I'm actually really interested. I guess that would be um, kind of vegan or non-dairy. I know there's a lot of like food yeah. allergies out there. That's a nice idea, Jessica. I really yeah. like that. Um, and I know they make almond milk ice creams too, right? Yeah, so they you do. Can probably use they that. do. My favorite's coconut milk ice cream. It's so creamy. Ooh, yeah, you I've wouldn't even know. Too. Yeah, you would have no idea. Um, so I just tore off a few leaves of basil yeah. and threw them down it in so there. Smells so good. Um, I know, doesn't it? It smells like a little pizza shop. It does, I know. And um, Rachel has, we were just saying, Rachel has so many Sloppy Joe recipes online. We were deciding which one to make today, and you know, we're, we love pizza, so we went for Pizza yeah. Joe's. <laughs> but um, she's got this one, we was either between Pizza Joe's or Hula Joe's, just because Hula Joe's Hula is like Joe's. her Hawaiian version of the Sloppy Joe, and it just yeah. always makes us smile. Look at that, here's a mm. Pizza Joe. I topped it with some mozzarella cheese. Yum. Um, but like I said, it, like you know, it's a pizza Sloppy Joe, so whatever you like on pizza, throw it into there. 
And you have you know, your own version yeah, of Yeah, you could pizza definitely tray. add some like broccoli in there or any kind of mushrooms would be great, like any kind of yep. other pizza toppings. Totally. Are we get are we getting our sloppy joe on? We're gonna get our slop on. Excellent. <laughs> um, we were talking earlier too, if you wanna make this recipe a little bit healthier, you could use some lettuce cups, right? Lettuce cups, definitely. It would make it healthier and sloppier. You're so. <laughs> <laughs> sloppy joe's to the fullest effect. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna take a yeah, bite we're, of this, I we're, think. we're doing this, aren't we? Mm -hmm. You're holding the pot. I'm going over the stove. Mm. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's really good. Rachel yeah. Ray. That Rachel Ray. <laughs> She's the what best. <laughs> um, okay. No. As what I chew my me? sloppy joke. Yeah. Mary commented and said she loves some new breakfast ideas. I feel like you Facebook mm. users might have our office bugged. Yeah. Because you're always coming up with the ideas that we, we were talking about. Um, love breakfast, my favorite meal of the day. Um, and stay tuned. I think next week or the week after we were planning on doing a few breakfast ideas. So yeah. thank you, Mary, for the suggestion. And thank you so much for watching. Totally. Um, Tara's asking, is it better to tear basil leaves or chop? Um, you could do either one. When you tear them, they don't bruise as much. Um, it's a really delicate herb, so when you chop it, they bruise a little bit and turn really brown. Um, and basically, basil is just a flavor agent. So if you throw the leaves in their hole, it's gonna perfume everything. Right. Um, so whenever we use basil, a lot of the times we just like to um, uh, tear it and throw it into whatever we're making. I like that too. Um, if you guys are just joining us, uh, today is Throwback Thursday. Um, so we're making Thursday. some of our favorite Rachel Ray recipes that are throwbacks. I made this yummy um, mm. sloppy jar. Look how sloppy that is. And it is so good. It's a pizza jar, so it tastes just like pizza, but it's on a bun. I actually think that might even be like a 15 or 20 minute meal. Yeah, it's super fast. I think it's definitely faster than 30. Mm -hmm. um, so my chicken fingers, uh, the pretzel and peanut crusted chicken fingers, um, which is one of my all-time favorite throwback Rachel recipes. Actually, we were talking before, the first time she made it was, the first time I remember her making it was season one and Jessica Simpson was the guest. Yeah. Which I was such a that. cool day here. Jessica Simpson's just the best. And she wanted to learn how to cook something from Rachel and Rachel taught her how to make this. And she's probably made it six or seven times since. It was a fun, yeah. a really fun recipe. Um, and for this, the peanut and pretzel one, Rachel had suggested to serve it with um, either barbecue sauce or honey mustard. She served it with like a berry cheese sauce. Those yeah. recipes are all up on the website as well. Um, but honey mustard is one of my favorite condiments. Yeah, I love honey and um, I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret. Honey mustard totally comes in a jar and that's wonderful. But honey mustard is just honey and mustard. <laughs> <laughs> so save yourself the effort because I know that you guys have these two things in your pantry. It is equal parts honey and mustard. If you feel like getting a little bit fancy and creamy, you can definitely add a little bit of mayo or Greek yogurt. Oh, yeah, yeah. But guys, that's honey mustard. So I am going to whisk us up some extremely fancy honey mustard with my two Yum. ingredients. Um, I just want to say hello to Lisa from Delaware, Ohio. Oh, hello. Which was a confusing comment to read. That it's was like, confusing. From Delaware, Ohio. Or, Delaware, which Ohio. <laughs> Um, thank you for watching, Lisa. Thank you. So mm. here we go. There's our honey mustard. Delicious. Oh, yum. That looks good. Um, can you get my chicken fingers yes. out of that oven, Grant? Thank you so much, because I know we both want to dig into those. So I'm just going to serve this on the side. And I think it's, t do you have a knife? I'll cut one of these in half. I have right here. Um, Shelly commented and said you could throw sloppy mix on a hot dog and call it a sloppy dog. Shelly. That's a great idea. Shelly. Put this pizza on a hot dog. It's a sloppy hot dog pizza Joe mix. <laughs> Sandwich. Sandwich. Dinner. Doesn't matter what you call it. It sounds good to me. Um, so this All is right. our, what is this one again? The this pizza? was our um, pretzel crusted peanut pretzel chicken. Crusted yeah. Peanut chicken. And um, one of my favorite throwback Rachel recipes. Yeah. Um, cheers. Pretzel cheers okay. to our girl, Rachel. Pretzel cheers. That, that brain of hers. She is the best. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, that's good. It's salty. It's sweet from the honey roasted peanuts. Mm -hmm. Please excuse me for speaking with my mouth bow. Um, yeah, this is the really chicken's good. really juicy because it really just cooks on both sides very quickly. Incredible. Mm -hmm. Just like I remember from 10 years ago. Absolutely delicious. Yeah. Hi, John from Austin. Thank you for writing in and thanks for watching. Austin, Texas. Actually, we were talking a few weeks ago. We just got back from Austin. Rachel took us to South by Southwest. That was one of the funnest weekends yeah, of our lives. So much fun. So, John, have you ever been to one of Rachel's South by Southwest events? They're awesome. They're every March. Yeah, she does check a, it out. An awesome, awesome party. Um, so, we're going to, like we said before, we're going to be back um, all next week. So, we'll be back on Monday. Um, and we're going to be doing a 15 minute meal. I'm going to show you my three ingredient sangria, mm -hmm. which um, is one of my faves. And, um, that's it. So thank you again for watching and we will have so much fun doing this with you guys. And thanks for all the comments and everything. And don't forget, if you like what you saw today, make sure to like, comment, share, and cook. Bye, Bye guys. guys.
Det er sagt, ja, det er godt. Ja,